Okay, so today we're going to take a look at a piece of software called JoinFS. JoinFS lets you connect the various different simulators to each other so you can see each other within the simulator world. So it works with Microsoft Flight Simulator, it works with Prepare3D, it works with FSX, and it works with X-Plane. So let's go and launch it and see what it's all about. So you see I've got it installed here. So I'm going to click Join FS. And you can see it's immediately come up with this little box. And I'll explain what all these numbers and things mean in a moment. But you can see there's a, a bu these are buttons that go to the simulator and the network. So by default, it connected to the simulator when it launched. So when I click it again, it goes green. That means it's successfully connected to the running simulator. And it tries to to detect which simulator is running completely automatically. Okay, you see the version number down here, 2.1.5 in this case, which is the up-to-date version. And I am not connected to a network yet. So what am I talking about with networks? If I go in here, well, let's go through it bit by bit, actually. If I look in the file menu, the first thing you might want to do is scan for models. So if I say scan for models, it's automatically figured out that I'm running Microsoft Flight Simulator, which changes the appearance of this dialog a little bit. If you're running the other simulators, it will look different. So it's saying, can you specify the Flight Simulator Packages folder? So this is the place where I told Flight Simulator to put all of its files. So it's the place where the community folder exists. If I go and look, we go and look in C drive, and in my case, I put it in games and MSFS. It's it's the folder that the community folder is in. Yeah, so it's all of the content for Flight Simulator. So if you point it at that, and then you say scan, give it a second, it's found 169 models. Now, what does that mean? If we go and look at the next option down, there's model matching. So this is the default model matching, and this will become clear in a moment. So you've got various classes of aeroplane listed out on the left. Yeah. And then and this will include planes you've seen in the past. So that's where you can see there's a load of PMDGs listed in there as well. And you've got the substitute model on the right. So this is basically saying if you see one of these in the network, substitute it with this that I have got. Does that make sense? So I could go to this Aerosoft A319, for example, and I can substitute it. It's already substituted, look, with the Airbus A320, a Sobo version. So the, the Microsoft Flight Simulator A320. So you can, you know, obviously there's things like the Boeings that don't exist yet. So you might, that one's got the wrong one, look. It's got a, a multi-engine piston substitution. So I'm going to take the 737-800, and I'm go, instead of using that, I'm going to go for the Airbus because it's the closest thing that we can do with Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example. So you can now see, if we see a 737-800 British Airways, it becomes an Airbus A320. Yeah, so you can kind of work your way down and put sensible substitutions in place as defaults. So we'll see what that means next. So if we look in File, I don't think we need to do anything. Oh, there's settings in here. So within here, you can go and set up what you will, who you will appear as to other people in the network when you are connected. So you can give yourself a tail number, basically. So I can, might put in here GJBEK to match my aeroplane. You can. I'll, I'll come back to what the hub bit does in a moment. So we'll come back in here in a minute. Oh, if you're running X-Plane, you can actually install a plugin into X-Plane from the settings menu which will allow JoinFS to do the injection of aeroplanes into X-Plane as well. OK, so we haven't connected to a network yet. If we look in the View menu, you can see Public Hubs. If we go and look in Public Hubs, it will slowly fill up. So it's scanning the network, because there is no kind of central server for JoinFS. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network. So each node, when you run it, you become a node is helping the others discover and share information with each other. So you can see here, there's various... The reason they might appear red is they're running a different version, for example, or they are private. So the ones that are green and online, we can connect to. So a good example here is the Flight Unlimited Network. 
or digital theme park. They're both online and green, so we could cho choose to join them. So if I right click on that hub, I can join it. You'll notice I have ticked the save icon. That means it is shortlisted in this dialogue for me. Does that make sense? Okay. So if I go and right click and join a digital theme park, this box then greys out because you can't change the network if you're connected to one already, if that makes sense. So you'd have to disconnect and then this becomes available again. Or I could reconnect and I'm reconnected to digital theme park again. If I go back in the view menu, so I'm obviously not at an airfield where I can see anybody. So I'm, I'm now wondering, OK, so who's connected and where are they? So I can now, now go to the aircraft window and pop it open. These are the people that are connected to this hub at this time. So you can see there's me, zero miles away. And you can see there are some other people. Someone's two and a half thousand miles away, someone's four and a half thousand miles away, and someone's 720 miles away. And here's the trick. If this was your friends and they happen to be at this airport, you could go through and maybe they've got specific airplanes that don't work well with your default matching you've set up. You can right click on them and substitute them in here as well. So you can say a particular friend that might be parked next to you, you might want to put them in the exact, exactly the right livery, for example. So I could come down here and say, actually, I want you in the Grand Caravan with the Emerald livery, for example. And it will do it live while you're, while you're watching and you'll see the airplane change. OK, the other thing that's worth having a look at in here is the sessions. This shows you actually the users that are connected, not the airplanes they are flying. Does that make sense? So you get to see their call signs and their nicknames. OK, and that's really all you need to know. And you can get to see what simulator they're running as well. But really, JoinFS is providing glue between the various people running various simulators all over the world so you can see each other's aeroplanes. So if you've got a group of friends flying a collection of different simulators, this gives you a way of seeing each other. Now let's just disconnect from that network and let's just have a look at what this means, this top box. When you run JoinFS, it gives you a number. Now, I think I'm right in saying, if I go and run the command prompt in Windows and we type ifconf, or it's ipconfig, isn't it, in Windows, my IP address is, oh no, it's not doing it. Oh, this is my internal IP address here. I would need to do my IP address to the outside world. So we'll go to what is my IP on the internet. So let's move this out of the way a little bit. And it will tell me what my IP address is to the outside world. And oh, I thought it might match, and it doesn't. OK, so we won't worry about that. So when JoinFS launches, it generates this number. And it I thought, from what other people had said, it, it relates to your IP address. It absolutely doesn't. So it generates this random key that is you, the identity of your computer in the network. Yeah? So what you can do is create here, and you've turned yourself into a hub on the spot. Now the only way people can join that hub is if you share this number with them. Yeah? So then they can put the, the number into the bottom box and join it. Okay? So then if I disconnect from the network it becomes available again. Does that make sense? So we're able to make an ad hoc hub just by clicking create and your instance of join fs becomes a private hub that's not listed on the public hubs page if you want to make a hub that's listed on the public hubs page all you need is this little program and you go into the settings menu and you enable public hub yeah it will pick up your outward facing ip address automatically and you can give it a name. So I might put Virtual Flight Online, for example, for the website that I help run. And you can leave the rest blank and you can say, OK. Now, in order for this to work, you will need to configure your router to port a particular IP address, uh, sorry, a particular port number to your computer through your router. If you don't know about um, 
setting up port forwarding then you might have to go and have a read about that i'm not going to get into it in this video but it's just to show you that if you if you do know about port forwarding you can set it up and you can enable hub mode and then you will become listed on the hubs the public hubs page it takes a few minutes for you to appear normally but the easier way around it is just to go and click create here and it does all the work for you okay okay so yeah that's basically it so you run join fs alongside your simulator and as soon as you connect to the same network as your friends and the simulator the airplanes will appear and then you can play games with substituting them through going into the aircraft list and substituting it you'll notice all the aircraft have vanished because i'm not connected to a network if i connect to a network airplanes appear because i'm connected now to digital theme park which is just an, an open hub that anyone's allowed to connect to does that make sense hopefully it does okay i think that's probably enough about join fs i'm trying, starting to go around in circles talking about it but it's a great little utility and if you have got friends that are running different simulators it allows you to bridge that gap yeah so if you've got you know as long as everybody is running it if they're not running it obviously say if a third of you are running microsoft flight simulator and two thirds of you are in x-plane or p3d or whatever else the microsoft flight simulator people will see each other because flight simulator does the networking for you but the others won't see the flight simulator guys and the flight simulator flight simulator guys won't see the others unless you're all running join fs okay there you go it's free you can download it on the internet just search google for join fs so there you go i'm going to stop the video there